was one of the members of the team of the century. I suspect it could be Chang'e Langlands, man I just was comparing to in relation to Darren Locke here in Bob Fulton, rugby league immortal, showing a lot of concern for his dear friend. Let's hope all is well there. Let's watch the two captains bring them out, Lockyer and Kalis. Kangaroos and Kiwis here for the World Cup final of 08. recording artist and creator of the opera supergroup Amici Forever, New Zealander Jeff Sewell to perform the New Zealand National Anthem.
Charlie Adu. They'll stand and receive it with a true test of respect. Things to come. So 
So the New Zealanders now six metres. Australia's side of halfway. David Farlongo plays it back. Little White hands it on to Marshall. Marshall looks to split them back on the inside. This is Vartuve, the beast, centralising play. And he's captured by his nemesis in Williams, who's had a stellar season, hasn't he, with Manly winning a premiership and now getting a call up to his national side. They go to the heavens. Monaghan has a good look and a good catch. And look at him go. He beats one. He beats two. He beats three. He's still going. One. He certainly needs to stand up and deliver tonight. And a clearing kick now off the board of Cameron Smith. Chance of a 40-20 must be cut off. It is done so, courtesy of the fullback and Harold Carr. And look at the reception committee. Oh, just going a little high initially, I thought it might have been Glenn Stewart. DJ, you talked about one of the things that the Kiwis need to be up for tonight. And that was about recognising the threat coming out of the acting half of Cameron Smith. A left side kicker. Well, we just saw an example there. No pressure and an opportunity so close to coming up to a 43. Wasn't far off the mark. Speaking of the mark, it will now be advanced. There's a penalty against the Australians. Brent Kite not impressed with Ashley Klein. Forced to retreat. Here's the replay. He would home be the judge. Nothing really in it, but again, Ashley Klein, he's saying, this is what I want. Not a bad touch finder either. They go on the attack, 35 out from the Australian goal line, attacking the southern end of the Milton right end of the ground. This is Fiend handing it on to his captain, Kalis. The only survivor from that World Cup decider at Old Trafford and the Frank Endicott eight years ago. Plays it back to Lulawai and now Blair to the line. This time he thought about the pass once more, but Sanity prevails. 15 metres out. He plays it back. Options left and right. They go the ladder. This is Fleem. They've got runners. Kohara injecting himself. Running at the line. Two metres short. Make it three. Pressure now on the green and goals. Slow play the ball. Fiend's got it at first receiver. Then the kick towards the upright. Chance of a try. Marshall claims the try. And they'll check the tape. I reckon he's missed it. The idea was very, very good. But I think the execution has let them down. But Great play, Costo. Klein wants to check the tape, and so he should. The kick through from Fien off the outside of his right foot. Maybe aimed for the post. Was he onside? And right here, the ball set back on him. Did he get him with the elbow? Wishful thinking, but no. No control. Had a crack at it and had to. Difficult to have a go at a ball that's bouncing on the ground and on its point. Hits him on the chest. You can't see control of that. The boy, perfect execution. A play to the right and come back to the middle of the post. Steve Ganson from the UK is the video referee here tonight. We can expect a red light. Players from both sides are already awaiting the restart in hostilities, the resumption in hostilities. Straight up to the 20 for the tap restart. There's confirmation. So a real lead off, wasn't it, for the Kangaroos? After just five and a half minutes, still no score. And now making the inroads, Lafranchi, the Gold Coast Titan. That's a big, big surge. They can't stop him. Went straight back for a party like he wasn't there. Plays it about five short of halfway. First and crossing the midway stripe. Chopped down by Farlongo on the far side of the field. Now Gallon with a bit of a fend. Part of this leadership group with the Australians. There's another one. Lockyer, leader of the pack, leader of the side. Slater, Monaghan on the end of this backline move, has to cut back in field. And he goes to ground on the third. Stand up. Inglis, acting half, first and back on the inside for Kite. Banged down by Blair with the help of Kalis. And the fifth and final has been signaled. Smith, first and cut out ball. Lockyer, pressure building.
to Smelly. Well, he had to make some decisions. There were two parked outside Slater. He made the right one. He pretty much got him as he got the ball. And it's good to see when you talk about playing the Kangaroos, it's about doing your homework. So it's about recognising their big plays and being there prepared, ready to be able to nullify. Monaghan, he's had a couple of good carries. This is another one of them. Yeah, and all because of failing to find touch. I won't harp on it, but I spoke to Mark Horner, who was part of the Kiwi side that was on record that won here last in 87. We talked about finding touch, getting to your kick. Well, there you go, in the opening 10 minutes. Can you believe that? This is the granite-like body of Sylvan Asiba thrusting at black jumpers 25 metres away. A switch from Nokia to Thurston, now involving Slater. Such creativity from the Australians, keeping in mind the 1, 6, 7, 9, all Queenslanders. Now Kite, Brad Cockroach, New South Welshman for those newcomers to rugby league. He rises to play the football. They stack the short side. Thurston takes them on and gets wrapped up on the last. Great defence from the men in black. Good defence. Israel Falau, who plays on the right side, had actually drifted over to the left side. They were trying to put Angus and Falau together in a back line movement down the left-hand channel. And in the end, it wasn't required, so Thurston took it to the line. Good D, attacking everywhere. Blair, his turn this time, he'll hold it to hit it. Hit up. Two offloads. New Zealand is now with Marshall. There was a little bit of criticism. In fact, let's rephrase it. There was a hell of a lot of criticism coming his way in terms of how many times or how many times he didn't take the line on. Last time these two sides went round in the opening weekend of the tournament. Carlos plays it back. They go to Foon. He launches the kick between fullback and winner. It's a big, big kick to win a pull up. Bouncing ball. Just too deep. Did well, Nathan Fiend. There's a little bit of pressure on him. Wasn't the normal pressure courtesy of someone like Stephen Price. Just gave him an extra yard to kick the football. Got a complete contact on him. This is Williams, who has had a big shave since the club season. In fact, he was re resembling Perry McClary from Donaldson's Dairy for most of the NRL campaign. He's found the Remington after the grand final. Well done to him. Smith hands it on now to Gallon, running at the teeth of the New Zealand defence into enemy territory. Smith now going to Thurston. Stewart. Another Seagull. Quick hands from Slater. Now, pressure passing. Give the defence a wrap. Here's Falau. They chop him down. Oh, big Manu says, I gotcha. He's unorthodox, but he's hassling them, putting pressure on them. And it's got to continue. Gallon continues upfield. Legs pumping like pistons. Finally, he is trapped by the defence. That tackle took some time. The referee probably was tempted to blow the whistle for a penalty. Now Lockyer with that left boot, the trusty left boot, launching his kick, gobbled up at the back by Ho High. He gets around with consummate ease away from Kite before he is put away by Sydney C. Confidence booster for Lance after last week. Parrot out of dummy half. He normally makes good yards. Lance last week, of course, coming up with a couple of uncontested spills. Saw him out in the pre-grade game. Got five or six from the spot on. His confidence, the world of good, no doubt. This is Vartu Vay. Cast your mind back to last week. There are the coaching staff, Kearney alongside the super coach, Wayne Bennett. This Vartu Vay took some time to get engaged last week. Now, another clearing kick off the bird of Fiend. He keeps it on the carpet. And it'll be a kind bounce here for Slater. Let's see what he can do. No chink in the armour this time, Ropo. No, but a big tick for the defensive team at the moment, doing everything right. At times looking a little sort of not having the accuracy when they go in, allowing the Kangaroos to continue to fight the Dorgas forward, but of late, putting them on their back, taking the speed out of the ground. 11 gone in the World Cup final of 08. Kite doing the hard yards for Ricky Stewart and the Kangaroos. Speaking of that, this is a man who's done it for a decade or thereabouts. The Broncos, more recently Penrith, Queensland and his country, seven receiver. Thurston back on the inside. Stewart, Slater, Slater spots a gap, goes through. Now it's a one on one. He's got pace to burn, takes them on. Vatu Bay had a play the football, but Lockyer gets the scraps and Lockyer gets the try. It started with Slater and it finishes with Jeff Lockyer. The captain strikes the first try of the tournament and the Kangaroos will play from in front in this World Cup final.
fullback on the inside. Good start to this football match. He's on the fence is good on that occasion. The footwork can speed a slider just a little too much. When you talk about stories, it's a real Cinderella story for Darren Lockyer. From Roma in Western Queensland, came down to the Broncos all those years ago. Raw talent, was exposed to a bit of Aussie rules as a kid. Not much of him, you ever see him up close and personal. You're quite amazed the stature of the man. But it's what's inside that counts. Thurston against the Barty at the SFS last week. It was one hell of a romp. Thurston, three tries, set up two, save one. Not a bad night at the office, was it? Now he looks to convert the Lockyer trip. 21 out from goal, 15 in from touch. He has missed it. It remains 4-0. Kangaroos over the Kiwis after 13. Throughout this tournament, Billy Slater, he's been impressive form. Seven tries, and all of those coming in his three World Cup appearances. He set so much of us up when you talk about no substitute for pace. Well, again, he proves it, that to be exactly it. Lanza High was on, and sometimes a bit of luck. The Kiwis have had two chances, they've missed them. The Kangaroos, they get their first chance, and they convert. Back live now, this is Kite on the kick return, throwing himself. The Kiwi chases, gets play only to the 10. This is Sydney Seaver. Uluwai in the thick of it, playing a dummy half hooker, plus normally in the hearts for Wigan in the north of England, and his country for that matter. Row Party makes the stop on Gallon, and now LaFranchi hits it up. Big contact, wasn't it? It was David Farlongo. We wouldn't want to meet him in a back alley in Bruce, but this is Smith. They're targeting Jerome Party down their right hand edge, sending LaFranchi and Gallon at him. As Lockyer kicks back across the run. Onto his left, finds it pretty easily on the full. New Zealand, a little bit of composure, starting to get worked over. Need a few outside backs here. Matuvai, possibly Ropati. He's some of the yards, he's some of the defensive pressures. So the New Zealand is now safety first football. And Harrison, who's made every post a winner in this tournament, keeping in mind this is a bloke who was not even included in the original World Cup squad for the Kiwis. I know his uncle, Clayton Friend, who was part of the Kiwis' last triumph here in the Trans Tasman battle, would be tickled pink with his form of late as they find the line, the Kiwis, and set up to pitch the tent. The Kangaroos have plenty of shape and certainly well understand the structure that they play this game of footy. You talk about targeting the likes of Benji. There's more of an insistence that you keep on going down the short side, knowing that when it's ready, they've got a back line that's deep, it's wide. And what has perhaps been demonstrated throughout this tournament, their biggest threat is when they're able to get it to the centres, when you get Inglis, when you get Flau in full flight, and even Monaghan on the back of it. So they're a patient football side. They keep dragging, playing the short side, and then set it up. So the Australians now off the scrum looking play away. We should point out that it is a very typically balmy night here in the Queensland capital. A real trans-Tasman sporting field to the River City. Of course, the cricket well and truly underway. Intriguing match it has been at the Gabba. Balmy night here, typical of uh, this time of the year. The run up to Christmas, the run up to the wet season. The Australians now turn through the pathway. And they work the short side, and the Wolf man's away. Look at Williams. Williams has got too much pace. He hits the afterburners. Boy, oh boy, what a year it's been for this rookie from Manly. The Aussies get their second try of the night. They work the blind, and they profit from that. 8 nil kick to come. This isn't making on the edge, down a short side in defence. Can be difficult. Smith out of dummy half. Who's he got there? Slater. As they move up, he throws the ball right across the face of Falau and Williams. He's got plenty of speed. Now the defence was interesting. Marshall decided to go for him, which left Pohaya on a limb. He didn't even contest it. Too easy. A couple of weeks ago, he bagged three on debut. I was there at the ground. A smile on his
his face. He's grinning like a Cheshire cat. Bag three against the Kumals on debut. And of course tonight getting his opportunity because of that hip flexor problem that has cruel the ambitions of one Brent Tate. Williams getting the try, showing there is no substitute for pace. The first try, well, that was a touch of luck and some brilliance. This one was hard to swallow. Simple numbers on a short side. Manly fire. Shows us his wheels. Straightforward shot at goal here for first, and, and he bangs it over. And the reigning world champions hit double digits after 18. It is 10 points to nil. And right from the outset, the critical period in this game was the opening quarter. 18 gone, 10 points down. And again, they show how good they are. Being methodical, being persistent, going down the short side. You don't deserve to get that break. You don't deserve to be able to break it apart and go down. The little things, they need to return back to slowing them down to play the ball and addressing. And again, another area. One of those things you can never afford, kicking out of the ball. And it's come off the boot of Marshall. Someone will be calling for the Makita Chainsaw after this. Brent Kite showing how you do it. You cop one leg in the field of play, or at least in the end goal. The other one can be stuck out. So he earns his team a gift penalty on the halfway line. And again, I spoke to Mark Hollow pre-match. We spoke about it, things like that. And in the opening 20 minutes, the Kiwis are under the pump. Schoolboy errors. And the touch finder is a classic. Look where they are. Ten metres away. This is Stewart. Stewart backing himself into this New Zealand defensive line. Nine metres away. Battle stations now for New Zealand. Cameron Smith back to seven receiver. Thundering towards the goal line. He takes and stopping this Colossus from Penrith. Five metres away. Gallon at first receiver. Nothing played. And fell by three defenders. No, he's not. He flings the ball out the back door. Lockyer steadies himself, goes to Thurston, and he dummies to Stewart, and he takes the tackle of Harris. 15 away. Inglis claps on the pace. It's fell out. I beg your pardon. Look at him go. Caught me by surprise. Caught the Marcus by surprise. That was a mere thing. Well, he's nearly dragged four Kiwis over the line with him. He passes a flop down the back. It can spell danger. Talao from dummy half, 15 out. Showed us the strength. Not entitled to do it. Not at this level. He's been ordered to play back on the 10. Interesting call from Klein. So he must have been held up. This is Kite. And now the fifth and final has been signalled. So that really was a mere thing. Smith okay. ball last. A dab. Lula line. There he is. 
scooping the ball up, serving it up for far longer. Blair also getting a spell, hence the arrival of Sam Rapira. They dummy to Rapira and they go to Kalis instead, and it's Fitzgibbon, the freshman on in 17, making the tackle. On the last, they go to Field, second receiver. On the deck, the ball bouncing around. Monaghan has to scamper. He'll have to play at it. No, he won't. No, he won't. Cool as a cucumber. And that's an excellent result. Or did he force it? He has forced it. Well, from up in the box here, I thought he had it all under control. A last-minute decision to grab it. There, the ball hadn't gone dead, and he's standing with his foot in touch. Good call. Great kick. I was just about to ask Nathan Fien to throw it up and contest the football. Because when we haven't contested the football, Monaghan's brought it back with ease, but he found the right mix. Sensational result for New Zealand. Big restart from the Aussies, and here comes Curtis. shop here in Brisbane. Luke distributing the ball to Marshall, holding up the pass for Falongo, who sucks in three defenders, principally for Lau. Now Benji, looking to weave his magic, goes to Rapiro. And Fiend threading the needle. Oh, chance out wide for Perry Belson. Dropped a couple last week, and now he's come up with a most unfortunate 
spill the poor lad. Well, Lance, the posts are in the equation. He started outside. When you catch a football, you should be walking into it, not walking back away from it. Under pressure, did it to himself. 15 before the break. Pressure back on New Zealand. First drop out of the night for the Kiwis. This is Seven Seaver. It's been largely an, an error-free display thus far from the nine-time world champions. Stuart working the blind side. Look at him go. He's come along. Leaps and bounds under Des Hasler at Brookvale. First and back on the inside. This is the old stage of Fitzgibbon. Of course, he can play up front. That's where he'll be playing a lot tonight, given the light forwards on the bench. Smith menacing, isn't he? Eight metres away. Attacking the Caxton Street end of the ground. Lock is gone. Holds up the pass. Oh, smothering tackle from Harrison. First in. Bombing the wing of Artuve. High above the pack. Here's a try in the corner. Pass on the inside to Williams. Falau looked to set it up. Now a bit of argy bargy. But no love for the Kangaroos. There was magic brewing. Lockie got hammered. On the right hand side, so Thurston kicked it over to the right, sorry, and right here, Yorsha Flick from Falau realises he's not going to get there, tosses it back in the field. Stacks on the mill, William sees the opportunity and can't grab it. As soon as Falau got the ball, those big mitts and thought the try was on the cards, it wasn't to be, and again a let off for Stephen Kearney and the Kiwis. Eastwood's on the park, Cards gets a spell, and Perry goes for a sortie. Chant goes up for New Zealand now. The expats finding their voices. Rapira brings it upfield with great gusto. Fair run, wasn't it? It was a good run. It was good service from Luke as well. He made a few yards. And Marshall now. Second cousin tonight. Well, 
that scoreboard. It's no ball. It's 12-10. Giving the referee a spray here. You cast your mind back to the Halcyon days of origin, and that's a penalty, and that's a fair call. Sam Rapier was on hiding to nothing, and Ashley Klein correctly gets the penalty. And those faces tell a story after they led 10-0 the Aussies. A bizarre passage of play. Sees the Kiwis hit the front, and a couple of little niggling mistakes in this Australian side. Exactly how they wanted it. We go back to the good old days of origin, plenty of beer cans have rained down on this piece of real estate. This is the first time ever I've seen Andrew Jones cheer here at this ground. Before kickoff, this is Eastwood. Three line is the penalty kill, favouring the visitors. Eastwood plays it back. This is Marshall, the architect of that try. Oh, far too vase had his head ripped off.
It's a rather subdued match thus far. This is Fitzgibbon now. Twelve short of halfway. Thurston turning it back on the inside for Glenn Stewart. Links up with Kite straight up the gut, standing and offloading. In traffic, back to Inglis. Cut out ball. Goes to LaFranchi. Now for Fallout. They keep it going. Here's Williams. Takes on Vartuve, but there's support provided by Rope Party. Those balls from Glenn Stewart back across the ruck are causing New Zealand all sorts in their defence. Kite pops it out the back. Quick hands. Lockyer. Thurston. Tupo. Now across to Watmo. In 22. Opposite hooker in Cameron Smith. They'll get to their kick here. And 
too convincing though. And Slater there, just for a second, I thought he might spit it off the boot of Fien. Slater picked off by the chasing team, led by Fien. He's really given the Warriors, I think, something to think about, despite the imminent return of the great Stacey Jones. Here's Williams. Sugar, I don't think you did that in your career. Their runs are simple. They're hard. They just try to bust the line at every opportunity. They're what makes them so good. They'll play off the back of it. Danger time here. That's just kidding. Get too precious. Here's Cameron Smith. He is anything but precious. Teasing the mark of defence. The Melbourne captain, who of course missed the grand final because of suspension.
don't think he got there. Well, he wasn't entitled to get there, but geez, he's closer than I thought. A lot closer. That left foot is in the field of play, but I reckon his knee's gone out just before maybe he's got it down. Valiant effort. Couldn't get his body weight down. And the attention of Williams up in the air, suspends him in the air. Still got that left foot in miraculously. And sure. Well, Steve Ganson's having a real good look at this one. And so he should. Is it simultaneous? Well, I think that constitutes a try if that is how he sees it. And I reckon it's no try because that knee, that left knee, has hit the green stuff outside the field of play. Hence, it will be disallowed. That's my gut feeling on what I've seen. That's the evidence that's been put forward. That's my call. But you're, you're an Aussie. Oh, yeah, but I work with you. No try. They've gone. You must be the 10th one. You live here too. They oh, must be checking the grounding now. Geez, they're checking a lot of things. Are they checking for grasshoppers? We've had 400 mils of rain on the ground in the last few days because of these storms, so the grass has grown. The grass might have just stuck up there for the white ball, the steed, and the constitute a try. This, geez, this could go either way, and I reckon it's a nervous wait here for Kearney and Bennett. Ganson has the call, and arguably the biggest call of the World Cup. He's already had one big call with the try to row party. Here we go. No try after all that. Well, David Kidwell obviously at the beginning of this contest it was about the start while they responded in the second quarter as well. Yeah, they have, mate. And, uh, you know, Wayne and Steve just talked about, uh, you know, these big games are run in the first 15, 20 minutes of the half. And uh, we started going uh, up to one of these quarter try. I wish they'd been on the doubt. had gone in our favour, but, uh, you know, the boys are, you know, we're going for no regrets here and we're uh, going to go for an up-tempo game, so uh, we're looking forward to it. Mate, listen to you when you're watching that last sort of sequence of play, you're talking about patience and you kept saying patient. Yeah, we're completely 83% of our ball, which is, uh, you need to engage the Australia, so we have to be patient with the ball, keep turning up in defence and uh, hopefully we'll get to the back of the game. But you're feeling good. Yes, I suspect it's so. And thanks to David Kidwell states of this Kiwi side for so many years. I reckon he'd be looking over hot coals to get out there tonight. Wasn't to be. This is Kite. And they put him on the board of his back. Good heavy defence it was. Far long out showing how you do it. Not get back on the inside. Now Frankie from the Titans, former West Tiger. Premiership winner, of course, with the Tigers. A metre short of halfway. Fifth and final coming up now for Cameron Smith. And the left footed kick of Smith. Turns out well for Australia. Vati Vaya, not sure if he had to play at the football there. He liked to have that all over again. He tries to bark through them, bust through them. He got them back into the field of play, but geez, I think he would like to have it all over again. He didn't need to play at that. Could have had a bounce again. Had too much rotation on it, would have gone dead. Pro Party plays it on the 10. The chance to work it out. Perry makes good yards, as always. That's three tackles gone. They haven't got up to the 20 where they should have been. Had Vati Vaya let that ball. One more time, as you call it, John. This is Eastwood now. Just short of the 30. No change to the half-time score. They throw it across to Mannering. Mannering takes them on, running at Inglis and getting some support. Inglis from Thurston on the halfway line and thereabouts. Now they get the kick away off the ball of Fiend. He's really come to the party tonight in that respect. This is Slater with a little bit of a drop in the back, but it was a knock back there. side to Mannering, gave them good yards on their last players. Monaghan puts it back. A little fumble from Sater. So he got a couple of nerves pumping through there. Fiend, end on end kicking. Three gone, second stance, and this is Williams. Just his second test match, and they test him out. He's lost the ball. He fails the test, at least on this occasion. Eastwood stands over him like a mammoth. As Isaac Luke gets himself involved as well, gives the manly flyer a pat on the head, says, don't worry about the dead. It's coming back. Here it is here, solid hit, good contact, Eastwood. Well, the ball ends right up on 
he showed up. The damage was done underneath from Luke. Fantastic technique for Little Man if you're a slightly built footballer who plays backyard footy. Well, that's how you do it. Five five the air count. Almost five gone. We're in the opening five of the second stanza. And this is how high now he's been put away. 45 metres away. Manu. And the crash and bash his way up field. Go too far. Stop by Kaitlin. And now Kalis running at Fitzgibbon. Three plays, but no real momentum cost him. Looks like he's been winded. The captain, Kalis, slow to his feet, back for Luke, throwing it across to Marshall, back on the inside. This is Eastwood. He takes the tackle. 18 metres away. What have they got on this set? Marshall, Ohio, low party, and now the last. Fina first receiver. There's the kick towards the uprights. And it's a clean catch at the back from Thurston who diffuses the situation. Very clinically, very professionally. The only trouble there was Inglis as well, right over Thurston's back. Curtis, no wonder he was slow getting up. Absolutely hammered. They didn't want to go to Perrin out against Monaghan on that far right side. Tipu makes a good charge and easy. New Zealand's defence. And I think when you look for variation, you can actually may not want to go to Parrot, but certainly go to some... Certainly a kick to Simon Mattering would certainly find a little bit more of a result. He's got enough height to contest in the air. I think we, I think we need to kick up the bum with the tough judges, Ray okay, after what I've just seen. Passes that seem to be forward. I think everyone here on either side of the ground was accepting of what was going to happen, but the referee touched us. Oh, they've all missed it. Fitzgibbon's been taken out as a decoy. It seems to be fair game. Now the last. There's the kick off the boot of Lockett on the deck. Vartan Vane with the catch, picks it up cleanly, brings it back to the 20. Well done. They tested him out. They wanted Manu. As Perrin, as Wendt has come in from the far right hand side to get that ruck started again. He finds the shoulder of Manu. And it'll slow him up a bit. And it's a tap and go, a tap and go. 5 2 the penalty count of the Kiwis. Marshall really catching them out. But now it comes across his left side to Falongo. He's captured by Falongo. Good play, unorthodox. Yeah. Running at green and gold jumpers. Sim receiver and Lafranchi involved. This is Luke going to appear. Takes a buffeting, pops it back. Now Marshall on to Eastwood. He looks for an opening. There's nothing there. He takes the tackle. Good charge, though. Eight metres away. Battle stations here for the Kangaroos. Fiend keeps it going. Hawaii cut up ball. And now Perrin on the right wing. Nowhere to go. Takes the tackle. And fair enough. Good stop on the eastern side of the ground from Inglis. The kick charge down. The kick from Fiend. Is it six to go? You betcha. This is Hawaii. And he does not panic. Goes straight into the first and with the Maori speed bump. Straight over top of it for a little guy. This is Blair, a dummy. No one's full. He'll be wrapped up here. Kite. Working overtime in defence. With the help of Tupo. He's lost the ball. Oh, he got a helping hand. Chance to have a shot at goal. To come within two points or keep the pressure on. A chance to square the ledger. Maybe hit the front. It's a tap and go. Here's Rapira. Six to the count. Ricky Stewart. He'd be blowing up Deluxe. Two metres away. Luke goes to Fiend. Head down. Bum up from Fiend. And the Warrior will rise to play the football. Not far away. Hawaii should score. Goes for the lead. Got it down. Lance Hawaii has stepped up to the plate.
So it's three tries apiece now. Kiwis have a chance now to take the lead for the second time tonight. How about the blood running through Isaac Boot's body, kicking in a World Cup final? How cool, how calm. His action will be a little bit quicker. Needs to feed it out to the right to compensate for that as it will pull left. Great competitor, great hairstyle, and a great kick at goal. And the Kiwis regain the ascendancy here in Brisbane. New Zealand 18, Australia 16, after 51. DJ, you talk about being unorthodox. This is what these guys do every week throughout the regular season. Lance O'Hire, he leads, I think he's second in the tackle break and line breaks for the New Zealand Warriors. He does it every week. You go back to Benji's run. How many times have we seen him do that for the Tigers as well? Lockyer sends us into the next passage of play. Catch from the man who scored the try. Oh, and he will take the tackle here. And we have less than half an hour to go in Rugby League's international showpiece. The World Cup final coming here live from the River City, the Queensland capital of Brisbane. And what a game we've got. A lot of pundits expecting the Aussies to blow the Kiwis off the park. Well, so much for that theory. Parent plays it back. They miss out Eastwood. They keep it going out wide. And Sikamato looks to bust them now. A couple of metres short. Crawling towards the half hour line. They get a run on, don't they? This is mattering now.
than a conventional tackle. Jonathan Thurston, not happy with himself. Not his first error for the night either. The attack, a little bit astray. Not quite as clinical as we've seen through this World Cup. Is that their build-up? Was it too easy? Fan with the put in. And Vatu Valley coming in off the wing to help out. And so he should with that bulky frame of his. Makes like tree trucks. Why wouldn't you? And this bloke's not too shabby in that department either. Mona. Pair it now with a scabber from Dummy Half. He's done well today. He's done well in every match he's played. He's been the best player. Luke. Eight short of half one. Restrained, five short of the midway strike. Referee Klein has the arm extended, hence the kick off the ball of Fiend. Will he find the line? Not this time. Billy Slater cuts it off. Now he winds up, gets away from Fiend, gets away from another rugby tackler. Great kick return from arguably the number one player on the international scene as we speak and backed up by Monaghan. A big yard for two tackles. The New Zealand defensive line had him pushed up. Smith on the field should strengthen that area. He just had a breather, just entered his way back into the field of play. Seven to seven. Gets rid of one. Lost a bit in the process. That won't stop the big man. Lock him to Thurston. Thurston with a step almost went through. Around the foot places was Luke. Tackled. Had to be made. Smith. Lock him. Down the short side. There's the kick. Ohio has it under control. Will he get back? Instructed to play the football back here. 
10 metres, the obligatory 10 metres off the goal line after being held up. Tangle of bodies. Cameron Smith to first and now to Kite. Backing into the defence. Smith is there to shut him down. Blair over the top makes sure of it. Getting more from Kalis. 12 metres away. First and the counter is captain. The lock, there's the kick. Oh, beautifully read. Great read at last from Perrett, but he's in reverse. He's in reverse. He's trapped. No, he's not. He's out of jail. He got the key. He gets a penalty. And the kangaroos can't believe it. They're going off. Gallant. Smith. Just back in the He must have caught her. Picked up so, so well. into the game while well, you talk about doing your homework while well, the coaching staff there's a big tick two occasions we saw the pet play it came on the right hand side when you get two together Thurston and Lockyer plenty of decoys well if you've done your homework you know what they're going to play and you're there to meet them and they did exactly that Isaac Luke just walking past and a big smile he's got a haircut to go with the game that needs to play big as well coming up to the one hour mark of the World Cup final of 2008 what a game it's been. No sign of that forecast storm that was perhaps going to bear down on Brisbane tonight and what has been a terrible week for the people of South East Queensland. The storm on the field of the ones from the storm. Seven out of 12 for the Aussies. Just three left for Stephen Kearney. Carlos, it's a fair one. He offloads too. His best run of the tournament with an offload. Smith was supporting him. There's Marshall providing the kick. And Slater, his confidence is sky high. Oh, he's had a brain explosion. Benji Marshall. Benji Barley has bounced. He can't believe it. Christmas is still five weeks away. But he thinks Santa Claus is here at the Cauldron. It's the Kiwis at 22-16. What can't believe what I have just seen. Got the kick away. And 
and Slater. You can bet he'll steer clear of the sideline. You betcha. He comes towards the midway stage of the, of the park. He went straight towards one of those big signs across the ground. He wasn't going nowhere near that sideline. Well, now the composure of this Australian team. Many have called it the greatest assembled to date. The Super Deceiver has hit five. This is where Lockyer needs to step up first and hasn't had a match that he'll be proud of. But Lockyer is going to take control. The Australians on an eight-game trans-Tasman winning streak. Welcome to hot tonight. Here's Thurston back on the inside. Watmo. He's lost the ball. It's been ripped out. Ripped out as the call of Lillaway. He is far from impressed. Good tackle from Taylor's down below. Lillaway the helping hand. Leave it at that. A good call from the referee. Flying Johnny on the spot to make the call. Now big set coming up. Big, big set. This is Stewart. He's enjoyed a boom season. Luke Manley, New South Wales, and now Australia. There's a punch up, a whipping punch up in back play. We'll stick with the action. This is LaFranchi, three metres away. On their own goal line, New Zealand. And here they go with Lockyer over the top, and Inglis will score. It's Superman himself. And Inglis goes in. And here come the Kangaroos. 15 to go. And they trail by two. Costly mistake with a repeat set of six. And then Perrin on the outside. He's made many a good decision and had a good game. He made his decision to come in too early. You watch him. Lockyer saw him there and just knew he had him covered. Two on the outside. Inglis all on a hand. You get that. Perrin needed to hold himself a little bit more. Could have had more time to make the decision. And they don't stop this one. They were never going to stop the ball in any case. A good thing, the kick is out wide. Inglis, who set up that breathtaking try for Gasmere in the centenary test at the cricket ground in Sydney earlier in the year. And check this out. A call to arms for the men in black. They still lead the game. Big kick coming up now. Ruben Wicke in the middle, having a lot to say. The game there to be won and lost. The trophy there to be won and lost. Test match number 13 for Inglis. One of the real superstars of the modern game. Jonathan Thurston, if you want to put the kettle on, now's the time. Get that Billy going. Bundaberg run getting plenty of coverage tonight, thanks to Thurston. The clock is ticking away. Now it's been stopped. We can confirm that. But it took some time, did it not? He will be loving this, Jonathan Thurston. He loves the challenge. Loves the big moment. Sets himself with a big stage. Well, you of all people, you'd know that kickers, they, they live for this moment, these moments, they live for it. Will we get a banana beer? One and only, a select band of players to chalk up 50 points in a Rugby League World Cup. He's got 50 for this series. Here he goes, from way out on the sideline, he's missed it, never even looked like going between the uprights, so it's still the Kiwis by two after 67. The Kiwi defence side, they knew this play. They were able to withstand it coming down the right-hand flank through Falau while they went back to the left-hand side. Whenever you get a back row, in this case it was the Frankie, sets it up, Thurston and Lockyer come together, you've got to be able to make the right decisions. Back underway off the ball of Marshall. Four tries apiece. Goal kicking has proved the difference thus far, and my goodness, buckle up. Was Frankie on the receiving end. Now Civil Receiver winding up the big man from the Penrith Panthers. What a custom to Sun from his days with the Broncos. And Gallon, he loves the rough stuff. A rough and tumble player from way back. Easy yards, but no penalties. Stewart beats one. But that's it. 
two changes left for Kearney. Four for Stewart. Seven for Cedar. Again putting his hand up at the back end of the match. Great tackle for Blue Lawai there. Little golf for Big Guy. Stopped it in his tracks. Blue Lawai, they couldn't stop the kick. And it's Ohio. He'll be picked off. Lotmo getting down there. Good chase. Leading the kick chase. Had a mumble of the bounce too. Lance picked it up well. Perrick can't make too many yards. It's time courtesy of Thurston. This is certainly a different Kiwi side to what we saw on that opening weekend. The Suncorp surface taking a pounding, and this is not going to help the Australian calls. Contentious decision from Ashley Klein. He might need a police escort, Ropo, to get out of Suncorp tonight. Well, it was a timely penalty as well, because you sense that the Kangaroos were looking to lift the tempo, lift the pace. So their line speed was going a little bit overboard, a little on top while Klein, he had other plans. So here we go, New Zealand into enemy territory. 8-4, the penalty count tonight. I'm sure that'll be the subject of some discussion, whatever happens here in the final 12 minutes. They need to continue to attack Costa. No good hitting one up. Looking for runners, scheming as always. Far long over, play it back. Blair at first receiver, prop to prop. Kalis, Defeen, now across to Bronson Harrison, off to the Canberra Raiders next year, and he is shut down. Smothering defence from the Australians. Jeremy Smith looking to bail his way towards the goal line. On the 20, the last has been signalled. They go to Marshall. A switch. Fee. Now a kick. A chase from Hohio. A bouncing ball. Steve Ganson on the video ref. 
you got Ashley Klein, so you got two Northern Hemisphere people involved. Anything, anything is likely to happen. Oh, we're going to hear more about this. I'm not sure who the video referee is. They had a lot of security here at the ground, and I thought APEC was on. They may well need them at full time. Straightforward kick, as you call it, Chalk. And Marshall has added the extra, so I can confirm that Monaghan is still on the ground. The penalty try has been given. It's 28 20. Guys, I've got Bennett and Kearney about two boxes down from us, and they're screaming messages into the walkie talkie. Unbelievable. And the bank play here came from the switch by Benji Marshall to go back to short side, and then Nathan to play the right call.
so say. Read the fine print. This is Blair. 11 away. Chaos. The scoreboard and the timepiece becoming the enemy of the Australians. And the friend of the Kiwis. This is Marshall. Harrison in 12 goes to ground. Thurston's there to greet him. Mannering fires at the feed. He's under siege. He got out the back door. Marshall steadies, kicks. Vartuve says, give me the ball. Bouncing ball stacks on the mill. Now some soccer. And Blair will plant the football. He plays to the whistle. Claims four points. But not surprisingly, we've got to check the tape because that seemed to be a knock on off on. than Benji Marshall. Onside, out wide. Manu, we know he's going to go up. We're waiting for the clean take. That's it. Does it go forward there? No. There. Who does it come off? Well, we, meant, well, we will need a super slow-mo to see the ricochets. Ball. That's backwards. Are you sure? I'm sure. OK. Well, that's off the knee. There was a knock-on against Williams. Williams knocks on. That's kicked into an Australian. This rebounds. You know what? I've got a funny feeling we're going to get a green light here. New Zealand's had many calls tonight, Costo. I'll let you call it if they give it this one. That's most gracious of you, Chuck. Don't okay. knock on me out. Well, David Farlongo was in a position to knock on, but I reckon he has not knocked on. How he did knock-ons beyond me. A clean air swing. What about the not shallot pick-up of oh, Adam Blair? He's dead set had Tarzan's grip in that right mid. I reckon they've applied it just a couple of minutes ago, judging from that pick-up. Asking for that shot suggests that they want to go back to the ball you know, knocked on from Manu. This is a pinball machine. I'll tell you what, Steve Ganson, I hope he's got the fan and the aircon going flat out here in Brisbane. Will you watch this crowd go off if this is given ground? Well, I'm not sure how they can deny it after looking at all these replays. Now they're checking the ground. But you know what that means. You didn't come down in the last shower. Ropo, you get ready by the bench down there because that New Zealand bench.
www.abc08.com. There'll be a lot of fallout to this one. Forget about the fallout from this one. I'm just going to clock off. I need to get down the TAB real quick. I'm going to help T. Rofi get home. Give him my regards. And I'll tell you what, the bench warmers, they must be thinking they're in fairyland here. Three minutes to go. New Zealand, they'll ever come back in the cricket tomorrow. They'll score 300, no problem. The way we're feeling out of this match. Well, you are getting cocky now. You are getting cocky. Here's Williams. Well, this is the longest two and a half minutes in modern day history for the Kangaroos, excluding that Tri Nations disaster at Allen Road three years ago. And Costa, I know it's only one game, but it is the World Cup. Ricky Stewart was offered the job for life at the beginning of this game. I wonder if that will still hold. We'll find out, won't we? He filed in front of the press conference yesterday. Maybe he was a bit confident too. Inside the final two minutes of the series, and New Zealand ready to collect their first ever Rugby League World Cup. Now some argy-bargy, a bit of frustration from the Kangaroos. This script for them has gone horribly wrong. But what a night, what a joyous night. The parties, well, may they start right now. Coming up to midnight. Who's going to turn into a pumpkin tonight? Marvellous and all their wildest dreams. It's Luna White, Anthony Grown as a player. The start of the... We've seen some wonderful games here at this stadium. 83, 87, and this is one of them. Here's Slater, still trying at the depth. The pass goes across into touch. It's purely academic. It has been for some time. And this is quite mind-blowing. The Kiwis on top of the world for the first time ever. And a crash and burn night for the Kangaroos. Celebrating early, just the one scrum to go. 40 seconds. I'm sure Australia too don't really want to see this 40 seconds out. But then the rules. Much maligned. Everyone wondered where it would come from. It's come from a collective effort. A lot of mistakes from Australia. And some guts and determination. Yeah, especially after they were down 10 zip at one stage. And Australia led 16 12 at the break. What a second half performance it has been from the Kiwis. A commanding second half display at that. Final 30 seconds. And he's one of us now. If he wasn't previously, Wayne Bennett. Imagine his feelings. A pretty proud Australian as well, Costa. It's a night that New Zealand rugby league followers will want to continue. Down here, and I'm joined by very proud New Zealand coach Stephen Kearney. Steve, congratulations! Uh, thanks, Matty. It was a, you know the, the lads just it was a wonderful effort by them tonight. We came here with a real uh, specific plan, and they, we we put them at a place that they're not used to, and, and we got the goods tonight. Obviously, 22-4 in the second half. Now, what did you say at half time? Yeah, mate. It was just it was just a matter of making sure that we kept them in the kept them in the arm wrestle, and uh, you know played to our tempo. And uh, we knew we would get opportunities. And uh, you know, the first 15 minutes of that second half was real important. And, and uh, you know, I'm just overwhelmed, mate. Wonderful. Mate, on behalf of everyone, congratulations the way you've turned that side around. Well done, Congratulations. Nathan, it's obviously a dumb question.